Today I'm going to go through a quick overview of the features of Mesh Central. It is a log me in type remote access and remote management tool. Um, you can actually run it on your own server or use the developer's site at www.meshcentral.com. I've actually got it on my own server um, and I've got a uh, domain set up for it and a uh, security certificate for it as well so the site is secure. It's a HTTPS site. Uh, actually, let me log out. I'll show you the login screen here. What you'll see, and I can customize the name up here. Normally it says Mesh Central. Uh, this is the login page. I'll log in as my administrator account. And in here, you'll see all my devices. I've got different what they call meshes. Uh, here's a few of my customers. There's a, a mesh for each one. A mesh is just a container for computers so that you can uh, organize them. Um, and you'll see that there's different devices under each one. I've got a few customers with different ones set up. If I go to my account, you can see now here's all the, the meshes. Um, these are the different customers I have. If I want to add a new customer, I can click on new, type in the name of the mesh, you give it a password. And then these options here are all the features that the that you'll be able to run through the agent. You need to select the appropriate permissions before you create the mesh uh, because in this version, it's a beta version of software, you can't change the permissions after the fact. So if you create a mesh and you forget to you know, allow the KVM, which is your remote desktop, if you don't check that before you create the mesh, you won't have access to it later on. So I, I just go ahead and click all the options when I create a mesh. You hit, oops, and yeah, I gotta have a better password. Try this again. It'll take a couple seconds here, and it writes this to the SQL database. And there's my new, in my new mesh. And I can go in here, and it shows you the permissions here. It's just like I said, you can't change those after the fact. You can add another user to it, and I believe with the new user. Yeah, you can give them access there if you create a new user, so you can do it that way, but in my case, I've only got one user on here. Uh, so we'll go back to my account again. And if I want to install onto a PC, the, the agent onto a PC, you've got to choose the mesh. So if you click on here, there's, I click new is when I created the mesh, and then if I click install, this is what creates the, the agent file. And you would go up here and pick the name of the mesh and we'll say test because that's what I just created, but you would pick the appropriate customer or whatever you would, you know, whatever you name the mesh. And then you're going to pick the architecture. I, we've, I've tested this on the Apple devices, the current, and it doesn't work. It, it installs and it runs, but it never connects. So there are a few of these agents I think are a little outdated. Um, I've done the Android One OI Samsung Galaxy S4 and it somewhat works. Uh, the device communicates back with the server and I can do a very limited number of functions, but not all the functions that, that the agent has available. So some of these will work and some don't. It just depends on what option you choose. Uh, but the Windows version is what I use. I'm a Microsoft uh, rep, so um, it works for whatever thing I need. It's all Windows. So. And there's two files under this, under this agent. The Windows Mesh agent is the executable itself that you use to install it. And the policy file is just a small 2 kilobyte .msh file that has an encrypted, it's encrypted in the file, but it has the, the mesh information. So it would have the information, if I create it for test, it'll have the, the, the test network or the test mesh information as far as a, as well as a hash for the security certificate, because it's all SSL, all the connections are SSL. So it has that information, it has the, the route back to my server, pretty much everything it needs to connect. So you actually have to download both of these. So you click Mesh Agent first and do Save As, or you know, click Save, and that's Mesh Agent at EXE. And then you also would have to do the, the Mesh Agent at MSH. And those both files need to be in the same directory when you run the installer. Because uh, the, the Mesh Agent at EXE looks for the Mesh Agent at MSH file. Uh, and that's how it knows what to use for the connection. And you can rename the file from mesh agent, but they have to match exactly. So if you if you rename mesh agent.exe, like I, I name it based on my customer, I'll do test 
mesh agent.exe and then the policy file has to be exactly the same so it'll be test mesh agent.msh so the the name before the extension has to match exactly otherwise the exe can't find the policy file uh, but for now I'm not going to show you the installation it's just a quick quick and simple installation but that's not what the, this is about today okay we're going to go back to my devices I'm just going to show all the functionality that it has on different devices we will pick a let's see what's a good option here that's I will do my server here when I click on the device it shows you up front the power state the last seven days um, this is a server so it's on all the time I had an issue this past weekend where a raid drive failed so I did have the server down <coughs> for a brief period of time that night um, and then before the second the agent wasn't installed so um, it only tracks the time from when the agent was installed forward and if you hover over it you can see the you know the time period here it shows you when it was you know signed in that day and when it was turned off for that day if there's other machines you know that go to sleep it'll have a different color for sleep it, it has different different options in here for the depends on what type of power state it is if you click on actions um, if the computer's off if it supports wake on the LAN you can click wake it'll do wake on the LAN you do the only way this works though is you have to have another device on that same network with mesh agent installed that's turned on because it, it mesh agent will use the other machine to send the wake on land packets. Um, you can put the computer to sleep, hibernate, reboot it, power it off. The alert function, if I click that, what it does is I can type in a message and if I click, and you can set the time period, say 10 seconds. Actually, we'll, we'll do it longer because that way you can see when I go in. You can set the time period. When I do that, what that does is it'll actually pop up a box on the desktop of the PC or the device I'm in if you wanted to alert like the you know, if there's an end user at the computer, you can alert them to what's going on. You can say, you know, you're going to remote in or whatever it is. Um, we'll go up here to click on desktop. This is how you connect remotely. I click the connect. It'll make a connection. And I said this is all secure. And there's the test messages I sent. That was that alert. Um, and you can actually maximize this. It's a easier to see. I can click on control and delete. And I can log in if I, if I wanted to. Um, Charms is, if it's a Windows 8 box, which this is 2012, I don't think it actually works on there. Maybe if I was logged in, it would pop it up. Um, but that's where the start, obviously, is the start button. If I was logged in, you'd see the start button. Um, under settings, settings I don't really mess with too much, but you can change the, the bit rate. If you've got a real slow connection on the remote side, you can change the quality of the image. You can decrease it. But what I found, though, even at 50 percent, even like on a, if they got a T1 at the remote side, even 50 percent is fast and fluid. There's probably no reason to change these settings. Uh, the the JPEG, what it does is the screen you're seeing here, it's all JPEG images, so it's actually sending back and forth the updates, the mouse movement, everything is a JPEG. Um, so that's the screen. And once you're logged in, you can do everything you can as though you're in front of the computer. So let me go back to here. So I'll disconnect and we'll show you the terminal. The terminal is actually a remote command prompt. So I've hit connect. The first connection is just a connection to the mesh agent itself. But say this is a Windows box, so I want to, if I want to connect to the command prompt locally, I type in command, which is what it says for the shell. And now I'm actually on that device locally. I can run any command that I would run on the local machine, I can run this way. So there's IP config information. Um, so you can run commands, whatever you want, which is a pretty nice feature. Um, there's copy and paste and all the other things. Uh, we'll disconnect from there. Files is you can browse the file on the machine. You have to hit connect and it makes your connection. So here's all the drives on that device. E is just my remote or my uh, USB backup drive. And you can do all the functions you would if you were there. You can you know browse into the the folders, you can copy paste, you can create new folders, you can move files between folders. Um, it's a pretty nice feature, so everything you can do on the machine you can do through here. Uh, we'll go back to the general. The other nice feature here, and I use this quite a bit, there's a few commands down here that you'll notice. If you had 
a device with VNC on that network, you could use VNC to connect. It'll actually use the device I'm currently connected to as like a gateway to the other devices. Um, these other ones don't seem to work yet. I'm working with a developer to try to figure out what's going on. Like the, the task feature doesn't work. Once it, they figure out what's going on with it, it'll actually load the, the task manager and you can start new tasks, you can terminate, which will be a really nice feature once it works, but right now it doesn't. Um, but what is nice though is this HTTP Direct. What this is, I can connect to a device on that network. Actually, let me get to another device that has a different one. Let's do, let's do this device here. If I hit the Direct, what it is, it allows me to get the web GUI of any device on that LAN. Like this is a LAN that I'm not connected to at all. There's no VPN connection or anything. So I can type in the address of their router. And I believe that's it. And it goes out, and, yeah, there it is. It actually goes out and uses that machine I'm connected to as like a gateway to that local device. So I can actually log into their router as though I'm on that same network. This works with printers. What I have found, and it might show it on this screen here, if it's a modern web page with like HTML5, it doesn't always seem to work right. Yeah, this one kind of does. It tried to load it, but yeah, you'll see it didn't pull the whole page up. But if I had a, let me go back here. If I had one of the printers, and I can't think of an address of their printer, let me look up real quick here. Should have had this open before. I can connect to one of their LaserJet printers 202. And this will this will show the page better because it's actually a simpler page. I'm assuming that printer is turned on. They might have they might have shut the printer off as, at the end of the day. Yeah, I was thinking it's not going to come up. But anyway, that allows you to, to connect to devices on that LAN through their web GUI, which is a pretty nice feature. And the user doesn't see that. Like, you know, I'm connected to their device, but I'm not remote, you know, I'm not connected to their desktop or anything else. So I'm using that device as like a gateway. So the user at that PC, they could be using the computer, doing all their functions. They won't even know that I'm in connected to it for that uh, remote connection, for that HTTP direct. Same with the VNC. Um, if there was a VNC device there, which is this one here, I could type in the address of that VNC device on that LAN and it'll connect to it. Um, I think that's about it that I wanted to show on this feature here. Audit log just shows you you know who logged in. It doesn't really give out detail. I wish it had IP address in here so it would show you know, the IP address of my side when I log into it, but it doesn't. Uh, at least not yet it doesn't. Um, so the actions, yeah, I showed you that already. I think that's about it. And it does show, like I said, it shows if they're powered or not. Um, like there's one machine here that's turned off, that machine is turned off. And you can actually sort them by that. You can sort it by device, by the state. Um, yeah, there's different options here, powered. It'll only show the powered devices. It'll show what devices are sleeping, which I don't have any sleeping. Uh, there's the, the timeline feature shows the power status of all your machines. Um, which can be kind of nice. And dashboard. Yeah, dashboard shows it's kind of a newer feature they've added, but it shows the you know the what OS it has. At least if it's actually that's not correct. I know all these are 64 bits, so that's not a correct listing there. Uh, but it does show if they're powered on or not. Um, but anyway, that's the basic features of Mesh. And like I said, you can run this on your own server, which is what I'm doing, or you can use the developers site at meshcentral.com which will be exactly the same page um, and you, you just create an account and you can go from there you can use it to install you know use it as a remote feature one one quite one warning though if you create an account on their site even on my or even on my own if you don't forget your password because if you forget your password there's no reset it's, at this point there's no uh, way to clear the password so if you lose it you got to just create a new account and start over again. Anyway, that's a quick overview of Mesh Central, and have a good day.